Guys, we're on page uh, 158 of your student journals. Uh, welcome to chapter 6, Exponential Functions, section uh, 6.1. Uh, don't mind these numbers, you'll see why they come in handy right about now. So, oh, dang it. Let's see. Okay, pretend it goes just like that. Um, well, maybe a little lower, a little higher, whatever. Um, so you could copy these numbers down, 1632, in order. Uh, pretend these fit into the boxes a little more evenly. And uh, in each table, what do you notice about the values of x? So let's go like, I don't know why they would ask you that and not give you the uh, little things like here. But as you can see, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, they're each going up increasing by 1. And then 1632, 64, 128, 256, uh, 512. I'll give you one more second to look at this before I tell you what's happening. What do you do from 16 to go to 32? What do you do from 32 to 64? If you're saying, oh, you, you, add, you add the same number to itself, um, you're right. Another way of saying that is, though, that you're just multiplying by 2. 16 times 2, 32 times 2, and so on and so forth. 0 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 6, 8 to 10, or 6 to 8, 8 to 10. Uh, here, you're also just increasing constantly by 2. Uh, 16 to 64, this one might take a little bit longer. So I'll give you another, maybe a few seconds. And the answer is that uh, 16 to 64, 64 to 256, 256 to 1,000, 24, 1,000, 24, 490, 40, 96. Is that you're multiplying not by two, but by four. And so, in a nutshell, so earlier uh, in linear functions, it was increasing. Y would be increasing constantly uh, or decreasing constantly. You know, you're adding, you're going up by two. You're just adding two. You're adding two. You're adding two. Or you're adding four. You're adding four. You're adding four. You're subtracting four. Subtracting four. Subtracting four in the y values. Um, in exponential functions. It's the, the only difference is the operation, but there's still this relationship of a constant value, uh, but now it's just multiplication. So, explain an exponential function. I uh, looked through it at that table for you. Um, so, in your own words, write the meaning of each vocabulary term. So, really, the only difference is uh, an exponential function, a function where the change is by multiplying by a constant. And I should actually say, just like uh, linear functions, you can be increasing or decreasing. So like, uh, you know, positive slope or negative slope, or addition or subtraction. Um, and you could say a function where the change is by multiplying or dividing by a constant. Um, the way it's illustrated is just by multiplication, but when you multiply by a fraction, uh, that's essentially, uh, division, or it calls for division. So we can leave that. We can look at this, uh, a, b to the x. So when you multiply something by b to the x, when b is greater than one, so it means it has to be, uh, you know, 1.0000000001 or greater, that means the graph is going up. When a to start with is less than zero, when a is a negative number, then um, you're just constantly multiplying by that negative after you multiply uh, b to the x power, and then it's uh, facing downward. Um, one thing to notice is that the y-intercept right here is 0a, and the reason for that is when you have a 0 for an exponent, that really just means that you're multiplying by 1. So like, let's say I had 5 times 4 to the x. If I substitute this, a 0 for that, that's 4 to the 0 power, which is 1. So anything to the 0 power is just 1. Um, and as a reminder, your order of operations goes parentheses. There's nothing to do in the parentheses. Exponents, so that's why I went four to the one, uh, four to the zero, before I multiplied by five. Um, in this next uh, concept for you, zero if zero is b is between zero and one, that means less than one, um, but not negative. Then 
it will be a decreasing, and it looks like this. So if A is positive, then it goes closer to zero. And then if A is negative, it is still getting closer to zero. And again, the intercepts are zero A, that does not change. If it's still pretty abstract for you, um, just don't forget that you're looking for a term, whatever term is getting multiplied by itself, and then the number in front of it is your A. We'll look at this in more concrete terms for down here after number four. So determine whether the table represents an exponential function. So really, you're looking you're looking to see uh, a pattern of multiplication or division that is that is not addition or subtraction. That's not what you want. That's just a linear function. So if we're looking at eight to four, four to two, two to one, you can say, oh, you are multiplying by half or you are dividing by two. And in that case, uh, you would be right. Times 0.5, times 0.5, times, in case it helps you, 0 0.5, same thing really. So, is this an exponential function? Yes, yes, we are multiplying by 0.5. Uh, sorry, I should be more specific. The y values are being multiplied by 0.5 or divided by 2. Those are the same thing. Uh, here, you're just adding by 4. And so if it's just addition, then no. So no, this represents a linear function. Y values go up by 4. Uh, next, 12 to 9 to 6 to 3. It looks like you're just subtracting 3, so that's also linear. And then uh, for number 4, you're multiplying by 4 each time. Ooh, so that is an exponential uh, function. Number 4 is an exponential function because you're multiplying by 4. Evaluate the function for the given value of x. So here, we just replace x with 5. Uh, and we say 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. If you don't get why I'm doing this, that's you. That's literally just what exponents mean. Like That's the number of times you multiply something by itself. Um, and you guys can punch it into a calculator. And Well, it's the first problem of this kind. I'll, I'll show you. So we have 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. 27 times 3 is 81. 81 times 3 is 243. So that's our answer, 243. Okay, this is the same. 1 fourth to the third is 1 times 1 times 1. 4 times 4 times 4. That's it. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4 is 64. This one is a little bit trickier. Before we multiply by 3, you have to uh, multiply 4 by itself 4 times first. So 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. So you'll multiply 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 first, and then whatever number you get, you will then multiply that by 3. Uh, okay, so graph the function, compare the graph to the graph of the parent function, describe the domain and range of f. So the weird thing is, is that it doesn't tell you uh, how to find the parent function, like there's not even a section for it, which is like annoying, but whatever. Uh, the parent function is the function without a. So don't forget that you have uh, a, b, to the x. So in this case, b is 2, and a is equal to negative 1, and b is equal to 2. Here, a is equal to 2, and b is equal to 1 fourth. So the parent function is without a. So uh, let's see here. And the parent function <laughs> is 
So I'm rewriting these without A. That's all I'm doing. And the easiest way to show you is uh, with Desmos. If you don't have a graphing calculator, you just have to do it by hand, which is kind of a pain in the butt. Um, but, you know, at least in my classes we have, I, at least this year we have uh, calculators that we can use to graph this. So I'm going to graph two things. Two, oh no. How can I, let's see, two to the x. Oh, okay, okay, it, it will show for me. Two to the x, and so here, uh, a is greater than one. Um, we have zero to the a. Uh, so in this case, a is 1. So we have 0, 1, and then it just goes up, just like it does, does in the core concept picture. A, uh, we have a number that is equal to 1, a is greater than 1, and then b is also greater than 1, so it's going up. Uh, b is 1. Sorry, I don't know if I said b is greater than 1 or not. Um, and then it says to compare that with uh, this. So negative 2 to the x. So if you can see, they are literally identical except for the fact that they are facing in opposite directions. And this is just called a reflection. So compare the graph to the graph of the parent. It is a reflection in the x-axis. If you don't know that terminology yet, which you, I, you might, you might not, um, you could also say, the graphs are mirror images. Uh, you should know that because uh, you should have know the concept of a mirror. Um, or you could say the graph is the same except flipped. Uh, if you say that, like again, it's just less technical. But you know, if you know how to use your words, or if that's the best way you could describe it, that's okay too. Um, so that's number eight for the graph. You just you know copy your best sketch of the graph as you can. Um, let's see here, uh, one fourth x, so one divided by four, oops, one divided by four to the x. And so we have here this graph that's uh, getting closer to zero from left to right. And then let's see, two times, it's the same thing. Two in front. So if you'll notice, uh, the blue one. Let's see. What's the only difference? It essentially looks like it's just translated. Uh, translated means like a movement. Um, you could say. Let's see here. Oh. Uh, I guess. Sorry. If it's being multiplied by two, then that means there's a stretch. Which again, I don't. You guys. Uh, might have covered that in your class already with the uh, descriptions of translations and uh, stretch of, of functions. If that's the case, uh, multiplying by 2 is a, a vertical stretch. So you could say... Uh, there's a vertical stretch factor of 2. Another way of saying that is that this, the blue graph, is the red graph, but taller. So uh, I don't know how else you might describe this. There's a vertical stretch factor of two. Um, the graph is taller or skinnier compared to the parent graph. And I'm so sorry. Uh, compare the graph to the graph of the parent. Describe the domain and range. Uh, the domain. So the domain is all x values, or sorry, the domain is referring to the x values, and just because you keep going back doesn't mean that this ever stops. Um, this will just keep getting higher and higher and higher, way higher than you could imagine, than I could imagine even, um, than anybody could imagine, unless they have a really good imagination. So the domain, domain, x is all real numbers, or x is all values, range. This one is different. So the reason why uh, the x or the domain is all values is because I can keep going to the right and never stop, and I can also keep going to the left and never stop. Now for the y, I could keep going up and never stop, but can I keep going down? If you look at this, will we ever pass this, uh, the x-axis? Will we ever go down? No, we will not. Otherwise, it would have happened by now. So it just keeps getting closer and closer to zero, but does it ever even hit zero? The answer is no. So the, the range is 
let's see, the range is y greater than 0. And the same thing, uh, actually, let's go back and graph both of those. So we have 2 to the x, and we have, oh, sorry, it only wants me to describe the domain range of f, not even both of them. So let's see here, f is negative 2 to the x. So here we can see that we're going to keep going from left to the right, and we can just keep going to the right forever and ever. Um, so the range, sorry, so the domain in this case is also domain. X is all real numbers. Range. Y. Uh, will I be able ever be able to go above zero? And the answer is no. Range. Y is less than zero. And that's it. If you want to use your words, you could just say y is less than 0. Um, and for x, uh, you would, it would be, you'd have to like negative infinity less than or equal to x less than or equal to positive infinity. All right. So uh, moving on, I graph the function, describe the domain and range. So really, you guys can just punch this into Desmos or your graphing calculator. And then uh, describe the domain, which is x, and the range, which is y. Write an exponential function represented by the table or graph. I don't know why they would do this when you're like not that ready yet, but whatever. You just give give it your best shot. Uh, using things like this to help, knowing that the format looks like this. So a b to the x, a times b to the x. Um, so let's see. We know that this is our, if we look at the y-intercept, what does that tell us? I'm going to go back to the journal, uh, to the core concepts so you guys could physically do it yourself. Uh, that gives us, the y-intercept tells us what uh, b is being, uh, b, of, b to the x is being multiplied by. So that tells you your a, right? And then uh, from there, whatever number it's being multiplied by, that's, uh, that's b. So if we look at this, uh, we're multiplying by 6, and our y-intercept is 3. So that's our, that's our a. So it's 3 times uh, 6 to the x, right? And here, you got to think, okay, what am I uh, multiplying by? And let's see here. So y is equal to negative 0.5 times. And to go from negative 4 to negative half to negative 1 to negative 0.5, what's happening is you're dividing by 2 or multiplying by 1 half. Um, again, if, I know I kind of did that kind of quickly, but if you didn't understand it, just go back, uh, rewind, and play a little slower so you're listening to my explanation. It makes a little more sense. Uh, okay, so we got the function. Again, you can use, I recommend using Desmos. If not, then you could also just use a graphing calculator. Um, how are the y-intercept domain and range affected by the translation? Again, you just have to, this is just analysis. Graph them both, look at them, use your words to describe the changes that are happening. Um, if you don't understand, if you cannot put it into your own words, uh, or if you're having a hard time putting it into your own words, make sure you ask your teacher, let me know. Um, otherwise, I hope you understood it. If not, again, any questions, direct them to your teacher, direct them to me. And that's the first section of Chapter 6, Exponential Functions.